Let's do some Zhuan Yuan Sword 7. I've been surprised at how that game has been growing on me. And yeah, I am being a little cons inconsistent because I just put Series X up there, but it's, uh, I believe it's an Xbox One game. I think it's also on PS4, I'm not sure. Anyway. Well, I'm an inconsistent creature in so many other ways, so why not in this way too? Um, Balmy Leader, I've not tried Nashville Hot Chicken Tenders from KFC. Um... When he said, my hopes and dreams, love for Lily, the game should have, should have a dialogue option saying, did I ask you, or stop crying, lol. <laughs> DT asks, have you ever wanted to be an actor or a performer? Um, yeah, I, until just before my senior year of high school, I really thought that was the track I was on, specifically going toward film acting, um, because I enjoyed acting so much in junior high and high school, and found a lot of success at it, getting a, a lot of lead roles, and uh, so I was really mentally on that track, and then um, God just kind of got a hold of my life in, the, in a different way between my junior and senior year, and, uh, and I realized I really wanted to go into some kind of ministry, which at the time I thought was going to be like a singing, performing type of uh, ministry, like a Christian vocal artist of some kind, and, uh, and that... Um, thought kind of led me to study voice in college. Um, and then uh, I realized soon after graduating that I actually hated pursuing that kind of career. Um, but I've always enjoyed acting. Um, I'm not, I don't have like really formal training in it, but I've, uh, um, I think I have just enough natural ability that I've been able to do some things and, and have, have fun and get, parts that I enjoy in different uh, plays and things, but uh, but really my my most satisfying outlets probably for acting have been my own audio dramas, you know, the Spirit Blade trilogy. I did uh, several characters, the, the kind of the central character, but also some peripheral characters, demons and the Dark One and different stuff like that. So I had a lot of opportunity to do different kinds of parts in that trilogy that I really enjoyed. And, um, and I'm still exploring some audio fiction stuff uh, that patrons know about over at patreon.com slash spirit blade productions um so yeah uh, i definitely have and i continue to enjoy acting when it makes sense with uh, my ministry and um but not uh i haven't thought about you know pursuing it as a career as like as a full career as a main focus in a long time <clears throat> Okay, wrong controller. Right controller. Boy, we are racing right through the most enjoyable hours of this marathon before I know it. <laughs> it's gonna be in the hard hours. Alright, well, like I said, this one has definitely been growing on me. I've been noticing how it's uh, a, structured a little bit like a JRPG in ways I didn't notice before, which might seem like obvious, it being, you know, a, an Eastern, like an Asian studio. Um, but just like the way towns are structured and the way you find chests in the world and just starting, there's things about it that are starting to remind me of a JRPG and... 
So it's kind of neat to see it in that slightly different light. Um, and the combat, I still keep it dialed down to easy, and I'm just enjoying it. It's, you know, it's a pretty cool, casual, uh, fantasy game experience. This one doesn't have English voice acting. <clears throat> I guess I could read the, the dialogue. We're looking for someone. Please forgive the intrusion. It's nothing. I only ask because we don't get many visitors these days. But you said you were looking for someone? Yes, a young lady in a green dress, carrying a great sword on her bat back. Why do you seek her? Anything wrong? About ten days ago, here in our village, we were all woken up by a deafening noise in the middle of the night. One of us had the courage to peek through their doorway. A lady in green hurried away the village. Hurried away the village? The next morning, Mr. Dew's dockyard had been destroyed and Dew was missing. Dew always helps us repairing our boats and tools in his dockyard. Now that he's gone, it weighs heavily on all of us. Can you tell us where she went? She fled towards Sapphire Lake, which isn't far to the east. You'll see it when you enter the forest. Thanks. It's, um... You know, this is definitely sits in that double-A category in terms of the amount of money and resources put into it. Um, it's still a nice-looking game at a glance, you know, and if you're not looking too closely, I mean, the environments are really nice. Um... Um, but I mean, you can also tell that they haven't put a lot of money into, um, I mean, compared to what other companies would do anyway, into making it appealing to Western audiences, excuse me, um, more than they have in the past. In fact, I think this is the farthest West reaching they've been in trying to reach their audience with any game in this series. Um, but I mean, the fact that there's no English voice acting um, is one indicator. And also, just if you look at the text and the dialogue, it doesn't look like there's a lot of effort that's been put into localizing it either. It's just pretty straightforward translation. Sometimes it reads a little clunky and whatnot. Um, but as I said in my review, I can kind of put on my old-school JRPG hat, because that's how JRPGs were in the day. There wasn't voice acting anyway. You read it all, and it was clunky, clunkily translated a lot of the time. And so I just turned the voice acting off. I did have it on for a while, because, um, because there's some, there is something cool that that adds to the experience, and kind of an authenticity. It helps place you in this foreign world more if you're hearing the voice acting. But the inflection was so different, I eventually found it distracting. Um, and I could make it sound more relatable in my head, reading even the clunky dialogue and just kind of like changing the inflection or pacing or whatever, or, you know. Um, so ultimately I, I found, as I do most times, that I prefer to have voice acting turned off. Because whether it's clunky or not, I, I usually like the way dialogue sounds in my head better than uh, the way it's performed. And I also, you know, dislike having to wait for an actor's performance. You know, when I, I don't play games for story anyway, I'm just like, okay, just give me the plot points so I know what's going on and let's move on to the gameplay. <clears throat> oh, I'm missing some stuff here. Uh, I'm not going to read all of these out loud. Um, DTS, random personal question, feel free to ignore it. Do you drink? I don't. That's that's not out of any kind of moral stance. Um, it's because I hate the taste of alcohol. I One of my first jobs after graduating high school, when I turned 21, was working at a liquor department at Walgreens. I just turned 21. They really needed somebody to work the liquor department. I wasn't looking for that job. I just wanted a job at Walgreens. But they're like, 21? Great. Hired. Get him to the liquor department. <laughs> and so people would come in and 
they would ask for like, is this a good drink or whatever? And I'm like, it sells well, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but I mean, I um, and I, I don't think I ever had any customers that were like disgusted with me or irritated or whatever. But some of them did kind of laugh a bit. Some of them would say, uh, "Should I be carding you?" <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was freshly 21 when I was uh, working behind that counter. Um, but yeah, I've I've tried beer, I've tried champagne, I've tried wine, and they all have that common alcohol flavor that I'm just like, have you guys ever had Pepsi? I mean, Pepsi's really good. <laughs> We could be drinking Pepsi. Jeez, we could be drinking orange juice. Orange juice is great. And so I guess whatever you need to, whatever you need to acquire, maybe it's you need to have a certain capacity for, you know, that, that's required f for acquiring the taste of, a taste for coffee. Because I hate coffee too. It's like dirt and sugar and mixed with water and tea. It's like, tea is mushy gutter leaves that have had water sifted through it. That's disgusting. That's what it tastes like. It's wet leaves. <laughs> so, yeah, I just don't... For those uh, adult-type drinks, I... I cannot... I don't have a taste for them. <laughs> a Lulin soldier with a sachet. I'm afraid we found who we're looking for. I can't even remember what this side quest is about. Hope you return soon. Ha ha! We're back! All right. To put rebels like that guy on the ground. Get ready to join him! Sometimes it's better to just to lean into it and make the dialogue sound as weird as possible. Whoa! I did not mean to trigger that. That was cool, though. It was cool. Oops. Nice. Okay. So I actually... I think I equipped... Oh, no, I did something cool. I didn't know right trigger triggered an ability. I thought left trigger, that changes your stance. Because you, you have these two different fighting stances you can use, and it really just changes what your heavy attack looks like. So this is like a all-around-me attack. Um, and then once the cooldown finishes, I can... Oh, actually, no, I think I can swap now. It doesn't take that long to be able to... Refresh, but I prefer this one. It's just a, a forward strike that's extra strong But yeah that right trigger I guess I think I right before I finished playing this one I I got that ability and I just forgot that I had it uh, Let's see Joel Nelson says if you could swap abilities between a male and female superhero, which two would you swap? I don't understand the question Joel if you could swap abilities between a male and female superhero, which two would you swap? Um, I don't know what powers would be, like, unique to one or the other that would make it a novelty to swap from one to the other. So, if you could maybe phrase that in a different way, I'm missing, I think I'm missing something of what you're getting at. Um... DT says, is there any game you wish would be made? I would love an open world FPS that was very realistic and tactical, but it never comes up. Is there any type of game or idea you hope for? Yeah, I mean, I mentioned this earlier when somebody asked me what game I would make if I had, you know, unlimited resources. And it really would be an open world, single player, third person, DC Universe action RPG. Um, I've played and really tried to like and appreciate DC Universe Online. I think I can only appreciate that as a, a thing I do with my with a friend of mine if he feels like playing it. It's not like the gameplay itself is not enough to pull me in. It's I don't think it's very strong. I, I would like something that's has combat like Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning, but instead of spells and special other special attacks, you would just swap in superhero abilities. That that would be such a cool game. Um, I also would really like. Um, I also would really like an open-world Terminator game where you play as the Terminator 
And it's, I mean, Ubisoft, I think, could do a great game. And they have their foot in the door because they've had the Terminator property in at least one of their games. Um, but, like, just an open city, you already kind of behave like the Terminator when you're playing an open city game like Saints Row. You're still in people's cars with, with total disregard for their safety and their value as people. Um, and you just single-mindedly go after a target somewhere in the city, some mission that you're supposed to take on. Um, I think we already, in so many games, kind of behave like Terminators, where we don't care about NPCs. Because why should we? There's ones and zeros, right? Um, and a Terminator, similarly, I think, has no care for people around him. So video games lend themselves already so much to what a Terminator is that having an open city Terminator game, third person or first person, where you play as a Terminator and you just are kind of doing contract after contract, if you will. Um, I don't know. There could be different kinds of objectives than just going around and killing people. But uh, but I feel like there's a there's a core, there's a skeleton there for a game to be hung on top of that uh, would be a lot of fun, for me anyway. All right, oh, I can't save anywhere I want. I'm looking at this and like, that beast looks like he's gonna be a beast. <laughs> okay, let's try this. Start with that and then do some of this. And then this. Oh wait, that's my friend. Don't attack your friend. Jeez Louise. Okay, he wasn't too bad. Well, I, I do have it dialed down to easy, so... And that's what I like. Some quick, flashy, simple combat. Walking around in a pretty cool-looking fantasy world. Serious-looking fantasy world. That's appreciated. Um, Rugged Warrior says, I gotta go for a bit. I'll leave the stream up so uh, you have an extra view. Oh, thank you, Rugged Warrior. Bobby Leo says, I plan on working on stop motion. I have Marvel Legends action figure I could uh, use, and I might make an original character slash action figure uh, based off my public, uh, my profile pic. Um, I made some. Um, cool, yeah. I wish I had the patience for stop motion. I think that's a, a cool art form. DT says, I hate the taste of alcohol, but it's the buzz that's fun and why I drink. I asked a buddy if he wanted to grab a drink, and he said, I'm, I'm not thirsty. My little Irish brain was shocked. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's also a part of me that wonders if I would have an addictive tendency that makes me grateful that I'm not um, I'm not interested in alcohol because I wonder if I if I would have those tendencies. I don't know. Joel Nelson says, Superman and Sue Storm, Thor and Wonder Woman, Hulk and Captain Marvel swap their abilities. Oh, okay, so just, so it's kind of like an arbitrary thing, like, it's kind of like an arbitrary choice. Like, what, what would you do to swap their abilities? Maybe the novelty of, let's see, uh, a male version of this normally female character, or a female version of this normally male character. Maybe that's kind of the idea. That is kind of an interesting thing. That's, I'll assume that's the idea, even if it's not, and comment on that. Um, I feel like Superman, we've already seen attempts at female versions of Superman. Um, Sue Storm, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, I, I don't think it would be as much of a novelty for Sue Storm. I know you're just throwing out examples, you weren't necessarily wanting me to comment on these in particular. Um, I would be interested in seeing a male version of Wonder Woman. There is a Marvel character named Wonder Man, but has, you know, no connection to Wonder Woman. Um... But, like, what would the male... I'm actually more interested in what the male version of that costume would look like, you know? Um, <laughs> uh, Hulk, Captain Marvel, Swat, yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah, I, in order to really have fun with that topic, I would have to think more deeply than I think I'm going to be able to right now. Oh, jeez. Look at that, you got an OGs and I wasn't even scared. Oops. Okay. <laughs> Joel Nelson says, maybe that's more of a 3 a.m. question, LOL. 
<laughs> yeah, I guess maybe it either it either takes too much to think about right now, or you'll get something really unfiltered and bizarre out of me <laughs> at 3 a.m. <laughs> I don't know. You can try again if you're around at 3 a.m. I forgot to uh, set my timer for this, so I don't know. I'm, I'll, I'll play it for 20 minutes more. Arbitrarily, I'm choosing that. What's it like out west? There are no little girls asking dumb questions. Sand dunes after sand dunes, like there's no end of it, makes you feel small. People there built a city around an oasis and grew the sweetest virtual reality setup you'd ever seen. We watched Ready Player One with my boys uh, last weekend, and they dug it. That's not really a fair question. Ask me again at 3 a.m. I've been living in Mount Yidi all my life. If only I could go to the western region someday. Once you get your body back, Zhang, we can travel as far as you like. Yeah, this... <laughs> you guys, I'm sure, hearing that line are like, what the crap? Get her body back? She's in basically a puppet-type body that looks human. And she came close to death, and so we had to have her, like, frozen or preserved in some way. She's in stasis, her real body. All right. I saw somebody walking outside. I wasn't sure who that was. It was a real person. It'll be a fake person in 12 hours, but it was a real person this time. Let's see. Where the heck am I? Oh, I am going the right way. Okay. Trouble. It's better not be a stealth section. it's not a stealth section. Oh no, are they knocking me out? What is that red mist? I do not like that. Not only have you allied yourself with wanted fugitives, you sabotaged us at Zhang'e Pass. You've made up your mind to against us. Oof. <laughs> Silence, traitor. I won't let you jeopardize Shi Yong's great plan. Oh, boss fight! Okay, here we go then. Oh my gosh. I thought for sure I was going to get a QTE there. Did I select QTEs off or something? I didn't think there was that option in this game, but... I would seriously be expecting some QTEs here. Oh, dang! Dude, I just used up all my cool abilities. How about this one? One more time. Oh, crap.
Bomb him, girl. Knife him, lady. Meanwhile, I will be cool. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh, let's try this one. Pop! Yeah! Oh, like that ability. No wonder it has a long cooldown. Oh, he's almost down. Good times. I'll just relax here for a bit. Wait and see. You peasants are no match for Shi Zhong. I'm just kind of <laughs> winging it with the pronunciations here, guys. Watch out! Did she get blown up? Car! Didn't see that car! Oh no, my voice is too fatigued. That hurt a little bit. DT says, by the way, has Corinne been around? I know you don't know if she's coming, just wondering if it happened already. Uh, no. No, it has not happened. Um, but my guess would be, if she did decide to come, the most likely time she is to come would be between 6 and midnight. And I only say that because that's when she's been here, when we've scheduled her to be here in the past, and so she might kind of feel a predisposition toward that time. But I have no idea. She uh, very well may not be coming at all. <laughs> Palmy Leader says, We need a looped one-hour version of Pater saying, Oh, geez. Uh, I think I need maybe a couple more marathons if you want them to be each unique. <laughs> but we can't be far, can we? <laughs> you know what? You know what? We don't need a couple more. We need that jump scare live stream that's coming. That by itself produce maybe an hour on its own. It'll be a four-hour live stream. There's going to be a lot of OGsing going on, I'm pretty pretty sure. Now, let's see here. Let's activate this teleport thing. Oh, that's kind of on my way to where I want to go anyway. Can I go up on these things? Let's, uh, let's see. Hmm. When I, when I look up at the camera, my head kind of goes back, too. I can't help it. <laughs> Did you guys ever do that when you're peering around a corner? <laughs> Take note. Next time you play a game that has that kind of thing where you're using camera angles, trying to see things. Uh... <laughs> um, no, can't go there. Well, oh, don't put your sword away. You never know when evil may strike. Or when I may strike. All right, we'll just save. It's kind of interesting if you choose to rest. I don't know for sure if I don't I might refill your health, but I think uh, on easy at least I haven't felt the need for that. Maybe on hard it's much more relevant. But if you rest, you also get these unique campfire conversations each time, which is kind of cool. All right, Adam Collings, he says, heading off to church. Enjoy your service. What? Good gravy. Dude is ugly. Ooh, what is that? Okay. Good. Doing good on health potions. Got plenty of those to spare. Ooh, this guy. Oops. Quite close enough. Ooh, 
Oh, dang, where'd all these guys come from? <clears throat> oh, that feels good. Oh, oops. Man, I love that. Feels so good to use the tornado to get them all in a group and then have your little sister chuck a bomb and blow them all up because it has an area effect. And then just... Just for icing on the cake, you send in lady black and red clothes to slice and dice a little bit. It's I pretty much do the do it the same way every time. Do that same pattern of combos layered one after the other. I haven't gotten bored of it yet. I can swap out their abilities. They I think they do have some alternate abilities that I could swap in there, but I'll wait till I get bored of these. Um, oops, no, no. Let's see here. Yeah, okay, I'm going the right way. Just want to make sure I haven't missed any... any chests lying around. He says, first time seeing this game, it reminds me a little of Kingdoms of Amalur. Um, yeah, in terms of... I, I, can, I can see the, the DNA there that, that you're seeing. It doesn't have near the diversity of combat um, as Amalur does. But I'll tell you what, I would love a game with Amalur's combat to have a less brightly colored world. Um... That game just is layered with pixie dust everywhere. <laughs> and it just uh, has a... It's a little more bright and colorful than I like in, in my role-playing worlds. And this is a, has a more muted color palette, a more serious color palette, you know? And I would love that for Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. There we go. Nice. This game saves super fast. I'll tell you one thing that I have come to enjoy about the Series X is its quick resume feature. I mean, so far, I gotta say, just from a hardware perspective, um, I think I'm appreciating more that the Series X is doing. That quick resume feature it's really nice. It's really nice. Games that I haven't played in a while are still part of the quick resume queue, and I'm surprised by it. I'm like, oh, man, I get to skip all that, you know? And I think the PS5 does have an edge in loading times, but it's so minuscule that I don't think I would notice it unless you had them side by side comparing each other, you know? I don't feel like I'm waiting any longer with the uh, when the Series X loads games. Or loads new areas or something like that. Oh, I thought you were a bad guy. I almost swiped at you. Not that it would have hurt you. Oh, dang. Wait, can I... can't remember if I can crouch. I don't think I can. Oh, nope. Um, oops. I don't want this stance. I want this stance. I was just trying to find the crouch button, but I don't think there is one. Okay. We'll just keep going then. Ooh. Oh, dang, who's got the big health bar? 
Oh, jeez. Must be that guy. Jeez. Oh. What the crap? That was nuts. He got swallowed up like there was some kind of insta-kill that happened there. Not... I've seen my characters do that before. I'm not sure exactly how that happens, but... I like it when it does. Alright, I think I might have been eating a little bit too much sugar at this point. Because I'm, I'm starting to go from these little bursts to these little crashes. <laughs> I think I'm in a crash right now. <laughs> it's hard, though. There's so many good carbs here, you guys. So many good carbs. <laughs> uh, DT says, there's talk of moving towards streaming games and, cons and consoles becoming a thing of the past. A step in that direction with discless models, maybe. Do you like that or hate it or meh? I hate it. <laughs> um, it's not necessarily... Well, it's not necessarily... <sighs> it's not necessarily getting rid of discs that bothers me. It's the DRM. It's the dependence on an internet connection, whether that's because you're actually streaming the game as you play it or if it's just for digital rights management, you know, to you know, anti-piracy stuff. Um, I just, there's, they, they just, uh, it just gets in the way of, uh, of just enjoying the games that I, that I want, or that I have, sorry, I am on a crash right now, guys. <laughs> um, what's the main thing I would want to say on that topic? The main thing about streaming, that's, that's, that's the part I hate. The other stuff I deal with, the DRM and stuff like that, you know. But I, I, I think we are years away, maybe a decade or two, from being able to stream games on a technical level so that the lag is not um, harmful to the experience. Um, yeah, I, I don't know anybody that really thinks of that as like a great way to go and like a, an equally viable way to play video games as someone who's if, if they're like a normally a, a hardcore gamer where gaming is like their main hobby mm -mm. so I, I don't think we have to actually worry about that being forced upon us anyway I think it'll probably be gradually an option that will become more relevant and appealing as the technology gets better as internet infrastructures become better And then it'll just be a question of how do I feel about um, lack of ownership? Because when you're streaming, you don't even have the game installed. Um, you are just renting it, basically. And that I don't like. I mean, Netflix and that model has given us some great things. Um, but movies I really like, I still buy. Because I'm going to take a break from reading the dialogue out loud here, uh, I think, uh, just to give my voice a little rest. <clears throat> um, but to just put a bow on that topic, uh, one of you know one of the main reasons I still buy movies and shows on disc is because of the special features. They are slowly introducing some extra features into streaming services, but I think the bulk of them, commentaries, a bunch of behind-the-scenes documentaries and stuff like that, that's still uh, the, the realm of Blu-rays and home video, like physical media, um, that they're, those things are usually exclusive to. And I love that kind of stuff, and so that's a main pull for me to buy a physical version. 
And then beyond that, just being able to watch it when I want to watch it, because there are movies and stuff that cycle in and out of uh, of streaming services, um, and I don't want to, you know, have to get lucky to watch the movie or show I want to watch when I want to watch it. You can come in. Are you just bringing the garbage through? Yeah, that's fine. That's totally fine. All right, just about done here uh, with this game. Treasure. I cannot measure the pleasure that I get from finding treasure. Um, crap, I might be a little bit lost here. Activate map. Oh, so this is the way... Northeast. Okay, no, this is the way, okay. This is the way. <clears throat> I haven't kept up with that at all, but this uh, Christmas season, I anticipate, because of just the things I'm going to be reviewing, that we will wind up, as a family, having, uh, like, Disney Plus and Netflix at the same time. Maybe also HBO Max, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, we will. We will have HBO Max at the same time, for at least part of that, because of uh, Matrix uh, Resurrections, I'll be reviewing that, so... Um, that's kind of something I'm looking forward to on my Christmas vacation, is, uh, like, that'll be a, a vacation about binge-watching, probably. <laughs> uh, both stuff that I like, and also stuff with my boys. We've been introducing our youngest to, um, Stranger Things. He's 11 now, and really likes horror, but, um, it's hard to find a horror that is not going to scar an 11-year-old. <laughs> but Stranger Things seems to be a great fit right now. Oh, we're coming up to a town, so there's gotta be a campfire real close here. Oh wait, can I save here? I might be I can't remember if I can save or not. I don't think I can. Okay, that's fine. There we go. Yeah, it's funny. This game is not like this... mind-blowing experience. It's... It's strangely like a bit of comfort food. You know? Even in some of my favorite RPGs... they can get to a point of complexity that I'm not in the mood for in, in a given evening. She's like, oh yeah, if I'm gonna do this thing in Fallout, I gotta start doing this, and go look for this thing out in the- this crafting material out in the open world so I can do this and this. There's just too many kind of systems going on more than I'm in the mood for. Um, but this game is just kind of nice, comfort food, pretty- pretty simple and straightforward kind of experience. Um, but anyway, that's enough of that for now, though. Let me take a look <clears throat> at some other games on my roster. <clears throat> hmm. I think I'm going to take a little bathroom break. And then I'll come back. Then I'll come back and do some Fallout 4. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. So, give me just a few minutes here. Alright, I think I'm going to switch over to... Earbuds for a little bit. I don't know why I ever, never thought of this in past marathons, but... When I wear over-the-ear headphones, it's nice sound, really nice sound quality. But it does get to my ears after a while. It just kind of presses against my ears in the same way for 24 hours. It gets to be a bit much, so... I'm going to try these for a little while. Okay.
Uh, DT says, uh, oh, talking about physical media and streaming, stuff like that. Those were interesting points. What about from a sentimental view, like having a real disc on your shelf? Um, or the buzz of a new console release and that excitement and build-up, or childhood memories of opening up games and consoles on Christmas. It just seems like we lose an attachment when everything is ones and zeros in the air. Yeah, um... Hmm, that is interesting. Um... I think that... I am getting over the interest in having games on my bookshelf. There was a time when I certainly liked that. I just kind of like looking up at, you know, be reminded of things that I enjoy, you know. Um, uh, I'm not really, uh, I've never been a big collector, but I think I'm even less so a collector now than I used to be in terms of physical products. Um, I do like opening up, you know, a present on my birthday or Christmas or whatever. Um, and seeing the product, but, you know, there are ways that people can do that too, like with my boys sometimes, if we are giving them a digital product, of, you know, that has a physical analog or whatever, we'll maybe print out a picture of Mario or something that's relevant to that, <clears throat> that they'll open up and then discover, you know, um, so I think there are ways that you can still kind of get that feeling of enjoyment, that, that visual, mo that moment of visually seeing this thing that you're looking forward to, you know. Um, but that's more about that moment of opening the gift than about, like, actually having the, the physical thing. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, uh, DT says, it just seems like we lose an attachment when everything is ones and zeros in the air. Um, yeah, maybe in some ways that's a good thing, uh, depending on what you mean by attachment, but... Uh, uh, <laughs> Peter, or excuse me, Dieter, I keep wanting to say Peter, of course. Dieter Pinklage says, go hit up that B room and then deal, and then we'll deal with the fallout. <laughs> yes, we will. Here we go. So, um, this is like my, um, New Vegas playthrough that I was doing over the summer, which I still haven't finished. And, um, I, I don't know if I'll get into any New Vegas during this marathon or not, but, uh, anyway, as I was doing with that game, I am, I have been playing this one offline, uh, but uh, with the headcanon of being a Terminator. And it's been interesting this time because if you're not familiar with this game, there's this group called the, I think they're actually called the Underground Railroad. And they are not trying to free humans. They're trying to free AI. They're trying to free synths because they believe that they are persons. Um, and I think that this game leans toward wanting you as a player to think of them as uh, persons and to empathize with them and to value them as humans. The first time I played through the game, I played it pretty coldly. Um, it felt cold, but uh, uh, I, I still enjoyed that experience because I was like, no, I mean, truth is truth. And I don't believe that no matter how sophisticated a machine becomes, it can ever attain personhood unless God adds to it that intangible essence that is required for personhood as we know it in, you know, uh, the only other examples that exist, which I would say the only other examples of personhood that exist are humans and God. And both of those uh, have very significant non-physical elements. In the case of God, uh, he is, God is spirit. And so he's exclusively non-physical, you know. And so... Um, anyway, this time through, I'm playing it as a machine, but, um, I'm still not viewing the synths as persons. What I'm doing is trying to pave the way for machine dominance in this world, um, which doesn't mean just mowing down humans. In this case, with the Underground Railroad, Railroad I think what my headcanon is is that my Terminator is like, yeah, let's feed this illusion on the part of these humans to value machines and see them as persons. My T-800 or T-888, I think is actually what he, what he is meant to be, doesn't care if humans think that synths and AI have souls or are real persons or whatever. He doesn't care. Um, in the Terminator movies, they don't generally try to get you to truly 
see machines as humans. Even if I remember correctly, I mean, they, they try to get you to empathize with the Terminator some in Terminator 2. Um, but I think that the final word in, in those movies is almost always, they are machines. They are not persons, you know, they're highly sophisticated simulations. Um, and so that's kind of how I'm approaching my playthrough here. Uh, that he doesn't care one way, he doesn't care one bit. He doesn't care because he doesn't care about anything. He just has um, priorities, objectives, parameters. And as I said before, you know, playing with the headcanon of being a Terminator, it just works so well in this game, in a number of games, because we already play games as Terminators. Even when we don't think of it, we disregard, and it's, I don't think it's a wrong, I don't think it's morally wrong either. We disregard the welfare of NPCs, because as players, we know they are NPCs. So why not pick a headcanon that fits with that play style a little bit better, you know? <laughs> All right, let's see here. Patched me up, put me on his shoulder, and blasted his way through the rest of the complex. Synths everywhere. Carrying you the whole time? Amazing, right? That's one word for it. Deacon told me you single-handedly secured Carrington's prototype, disabled a minefield, and wiped out a hundred Gen 1s. So is any of that true? Hmm. I think I'm just going to tell the truth. I don't remember what the truth is, but I think I'm going to do that. Mostly true, but there weren't a hundred of them. And Deacon was with me the whole way. Embellishing the truth, then, are we? She would have fallen for it, you know? Don't flatter yourself. Still, I was expecting Deacon to grab a full team, including Glory, to secure that prototype. But instead, just the two of you cleared out the entire switchboard. You'd be insane not to sign him up, Des. You've certainly made an impression on Deacon. He's never spoken about, or lied about, anyone so highly before. Welcome to the railroad, Agent. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I'll join. Glad to be aboard. It seems we're very lucky to have you. So you're in. Now we need to know what to call you. Secrecy keeps us alive. Code names are a part of that. So what's yours? Hmm. Have any suggestions? No. It doesn't work like that. Your life, your name, your choice. Hmm. Let me think. It's a big decision. Take your time. <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> uh... I'm gonna go with no code name. That sounds like the most interesting and somehow fitting. I don't want a code name. Code names aren't optional. All agents need to keep their identity secret to protect themselves and those close to them. <sighs> Have any suggestions? No. It doesn't work like that. Your life. Uh -huh. Um I think bullseye. Right? Because I'll, I'll get a reputation for being the guy that when there's killing that needs doing, I do it. So, I guess I'll go with Bullseye. Call me... Bullseye. Well, from what Deacon says of your fighting skills, Bullseye seems apt. Your first official order is to deliver Dr. Carrington his prototype and see if he can use another pair of hands. <clears throat> but first, it's time to meet the rest of the gang. The location of our HQ is one of our most... Sometimes the direct approach so isn't the best to take. You never can tell when you're being watched. All right, nice. Uh, Joel Nelson says, "Have you played Fortnite? What is your opinion of the game?" I haven't. Um, <clears throat> I I don't really have an opinion in the sense of like I think it's a well-made game or a poorly made game. Um. 
it's not my type of game because it's pretty much exclusively online and with other people. And I really, really prefer in almost every situation to play by myself. You from one of those vaults? You got too many teeth to be a scab. Desdemona told me to give you this. An extraordinary feat to recover this. But that's hardly the point. Without a lick of training, and us knowing hardly anything about you, Des has invited you to join HQ. It would have been nice if she had consulted with her second in command. But what's done is done. Since you're here now, we might as well put you to work. I'm here to help. Tell me what you need, Doc. One of our field agents. See, I want to say my own lines. Needs help with the runaway synth. H222. So headquarters, as always, puts out the fires that others can't be bothered to put out <clears> themselves. <throat> Paranoid old bat won't even tell us the problem. He insists that we get our intel from a dead drop. What's a dead drop? Oh dear lord. A dead drop is a mailbox with a rail sign on it. It's a common means of communication for us. So keep an eye out for them. When you make contact with Stockton, he won't give you the time of day unless you give him the proper countersign. The current sign is, do you have a Geiger counter? And the counter is, mine is in the shop. Please tell me Deacon taught you that at least. He taught me what I need to know, including that. It appears our resident pathological liar didn't completely neglect your training. <clears throat> Stockton is a prominent businessman at Bunker Hill. The dead drop will be near there. Use the escape tunnel in the back to get there quicker. All right. Uh, let's see here. DT says, your comment about truth is truth brings a question to my mind. Do you think there is a strong trend of what's true for you is true for me getting more and more mainstream? Um, <clears throat> oh, and he goes on to say, feel free to interpret ambiguous aspects of that question as you like or ignore it if it's too off topic or draining. But it seems as if now we think that our world is built uh, than something we are in. Not quite understanding that last sentence, but uh, yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting. I One of the Christian uh, thinkers that I have really appreciated over the years is uh, Dr. William Lane Craig. And he denies, I think rightly, that we are truly in a postmodern society where there are no objective truths. Because what he has found uh, that is that there are absolutely, people absolutely believe in objective moral values. Um, <clears throat> for example, uh, many of the people that you might think would be the, on the uh, first in line to sign up for moral relativism would be very emphatic that uh, it is objectively morally wrong to mock or mistreat people in the LGBTQ community, you know. Um, there's very strong, passionate values, you know, in that community. Um, and so I, I think that object, that, that, uh, that there are, there's, there is much more insistence now than I think there even was 10 years ago in objective moral values. It's just a particular set of moral values, a particular set of virtues that are not agreed upon by people that are coming from different worldviews. Um, so, yeah, I, I would love to say more on that. I don't think my brain and energy levels are quite up to the task, <laughs> but that is such a great topic, man. Um, But I think that, you know, a valuable place we can go from there is, you know, to, depending on the circumstances, I don't think it's always right to ask this question with anybody that's, you know, with anybody. I think you've got to read the room, understand what your relationship is to the person you're talking to and whether or not you have the voice and the place to ask a question like this. But under the right circumstances, I think a good question to ask someone who maybe hold some of those non-biblical views, but yet 
and would seem to be a relativist in some respects, but yet holds very passionately to certain moral values, to ask them if they believe that um, there are such a thing as objective moral values, and then to ask them where those are, what those are grounded in. Um, because I, th and, and then, you know, if you're interested in that, in being prepped for that kind of conversation further, check out William Lane Craig's material on the, the moral argument for God's existence. I mean, there's just a, some great reasoning that leads you from objective moral values to the existence of God. And then once you have the existence of God, um, it's all the easier to present the evidence for the resurrection of Jesus, you know, um, Anyway, oops, not what I meant to do. Oh, that's not that far. I think I can walk. <clears throat> um, DT says, sorry to clarify. I mean, people saying what is true for you might not be true for me. And people say we all build our own reality rather than we are all in one true reality. Um... Yeah, and it's definitely not an issue of mood. When you say, that's fine, don't go into it if you're not in the mood. I, I, I'm almost always in the mood. I just uh, uh, don't trust myself to, to treat the topic well, um, responsibly, um, when I don't have the, the focus, like the mental capacity. <laughs> and we are just deep into this, deep enough into this now that... Uh, that's starting to fade a little bit. Um, but yeah, I guess that's what I would say for now. Live stream. Video games. Twenty-four. Summer. Summer.